Let's talk about how to choose a good domain name. So you all know that a domain name is a really important thing, just in case you don't know exactly what a domain name is. <sighs> Sorry, having trouble with cards today. It's your URL. So when you are seeing somebody gives you a www.something.com, that's the domain name. You should have one for your business as you get them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you some recommendations on how to choose a good domain name because there's lots of ways you can make a mistake when you choose a domain name. And I don't want you to make those mistakes. So first one, ideally you're buying a .com. In fact, I'm not even going to say ideally. It's rule, <laughs> buy .coms. Or if you're not in the U.S., buy a .co. But don't buy a .net, don't buy a dot .this, dot .that, dot .anything else. It's just a waste of time. Even if that name has to be less elegant, buy a .com. Don't believe me? Let me just give you a challenge. Put in virtually any keyword into Google and go look at the first two pages of results and see how many domains are not .coms that are ranking in the top 20. What you'll find is they're almost always .coms. Next, don't buy into the other suffixes, the .actor, the .artist, the dot, all those different things. They're making a case because they wanna sell you, sell you a bunch of domain names. No, they, as I show, as I just told you, don't buy into it. Go look and you'll see that none of those domain names tend to get ranked for anything other than there's one possibility. And that is if you're heavily into the tech, .ia is, is, is working there. Next, choose a domain name that tells what you do. So there are so many people who talk about things like, Oh, you want a domain name that it, it, it's branding. So brand names, you want a brand name with an X in it because then it becomes unique and you can trademark it and everything else like that. Well, the problem is that applies if you have $5 million you can spend on advertising. But for most people, the people I'm talking to on this, when you're buying a domain name, you want a domain name that immediately when someone reads it, they go, oh, that's what this person does. That's the kind of domain name that you want to get. With one exception, that is some of you may want to buy your name. By the way, some of you probably want to do both and redirect one to another. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Next, a few years ago, it became quite, quite common to put dashes in domain names. Google is clearly doesn't like dashes anymore. And so no dashes, no this and dash and dash that.com. Not only is it really clumsy and Google seems to not like them, not like it, but on top of it, it's just, let's say you're being interviewed for a radio program and you got to say this dash and dash that dash. It's like, it, it just messes everything up and makes it really difficult to communicate. By the way, I didn't make a card for this, but it really helps if your domain name is something that you can say and that people immediately know what it is. They know how to spell it. They know how to do it. So I strongly recommend that you do things because as, as you get bigger as a company, you're going to be on podcasts and people they're going to say, how do you reach you? And you give your domain name. Don't have to spell it. So choose a domain name that is easy for people to be able to put in and find. Next, remember the domain names are case insensitive. And so they can be in all caps. They can be in all lowercase. They can be a one word cap. But OK, this concept of writing something in camel case is what I strongly recommend you do when you communicate your domain name in writing. And so something like frogsandardvarks.com written all in lowercase is not nearly as good as frogs. Now that looks like there's a space there just because I naturally wrote it that way. There's not, remember there's no spaces in domain names. Frogs, capital A, 
capital A for aardvarks, frogs and aardvarks.com. Just look at how much easier it is to recognize that bottom one versus the top one. So anytime you write a multiple word domain name, go ahead, don't put spaces in it, but go ahead and make the first letter of each word in that capitalized. It's called camel case. It will help you considerably in communicating it. Number six, you may actually have to break down and pay some money to buy a domain name from someone else who has already bought it to and and who has it for sale now some of you are going okay yeah i definitely see that because the thing i want it, it's for thirty thousand dollars well thirty thousand dollars may be worth it to you most cases it won't but hey three thousand two thousand one thousand it may be worth it for you to get that just so that you've got it it's your decision it depends on how big this company is going to be how serious you are about it how serious you are about that particular domain name how serious you are about that idea number seven i don't recommend that you become a domain collector okay so two ways number one some people think you view it as investing okay i'm going to go out and buy a bunch of domain names and hopefully sell them for three hundred thousand later on Okay, yes, that is that that piece of business does exist, but I'm not I'm less concerned about that, which, by the way, isn't really a very good business for most of us. But on a bigger scale, I know a lot of people. In fact, I was just looking at somebody's account yesterday. It was clear every time they get an idea, they just go buy a domain name <laughs> and they buy like 16 of them because they don't know which one they'll like. They're grabbing it because it's available. And then also this whole habit of buying the .net and .org and they buy all the different versions of that. You don't need that until and unless you're going to become big with it. So when you decide this is my domain, name, this is what I'm going to invest the next 10 years on, okay, maybe go buy the .net and the .org just so that someone can't confuse things in the future for you. But in the meantime, don't worry about buying all those. And I don't suggest you just go out and buy. If you've got a portfolio like I do, I'm giving this from, from experience. If you've got a portfolio of 250, 500 domain names, that's costing you $5,000 a year. Do you really need that? Do you really want that? So, a lot of people ask, hey, Don, where should I buy them? Well, there's a whole bunch of registrars out there. It really doesn't matter. It, two more pop, uh, the most popular ones are namecheap.com and godaddy.com. It doesn't really matter. I suggest you put them all in one place and just keep them there because it's easy, easy. Also, remember, you can redirect domain names. You can have frogsandardvarks.com that direct to aardvarkfarm.com. And so it, it's a really, really simple, easy thing to do. You still have to pay for that domain name every year, but you can redirect things, which gets you what into one more thing, which is you can move your site from one domain name to another one. So let's just imagine that you've got a domain name that has violated one of these rules that I just gave you and you decide, you know what? I really do want to change that. You can make that change, but realize that in the meantime, you will lose some short term traffic. Three months or so, your traffic's going to go, going to go down as you do all those redirects and put things together to make that happen. It will go down for a period of time. Okay, so there's some advice on domain names. What's been your experience? Where do you buy your domain names? Let me know in the comments. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.